last time we spoke, uh, it was 2019, we spoke just as Benched, I think, was coming out on VOD uh, with, uh, with you and Garrett uh, Dillahine. Uh, God, I love Bench. And uh, talk about a different world. Uh, yeah, no joke. No idea what the next year uh, would bring at that time. Um, Isn't that funny? Yeah, just it's just wild to think about now. I um, it's uh, some housekeeping to do. I'm Les Wiley for that's my entertainment. Uh, I'm here today uh, with, of course, the legendary John C. McGinley, uh, who has been involved with some spectacular films and shows, Platoon to Scrubs, with a, a range of talent, dramatic and comedic, but is now involved uh, with Brooklyn Nine Nine, playing Franco Sullivan, a uh, new NYPD union head, who is going to act as the foil for Diaz Peralta and the Nine Nine. Uh, Thank you so much for making time today. Uh, absolutely loved watching you uh, for years of big and small screens. Uh, of course, when I think back on Scrubs, I mostly think of Dr. Cox and and the heart of the show. What the the amazing line I feel Scrubs walked that that showed a, a depth of writing and a, a trust and a, and a solidness of the ensemble. And I feel like Brooklyn Nine Nine carries that same kind of thing forward. Can you talk a little bit about? joining such a tight ensemble do, do you do you feel like when you would watch guest stars like michael j fox come aboard scrubs and think well you better bring your a-game buddy well i think both shows are so well drawn on the page um with brooklyn 99 uh dan gore is the executive producer and he's responsible for the words on the page with scrubs it was billy lawrence who now has another hit with ted lasso mm -hmm. uh, and with TV, because there's so little time and everything is, is such a 10,000 pounds of pressure on your back, um, if it's not on the page at the beginning of the day, it's not gonna work out. Um, because if you presuppose that someone's gonna walk on the set and be able to pull rabbits out of the hat like Jonathan Winters or, or, or Robin Williams or Jim Carrey, those people don't exist. They're, they're those three people. So unless there's a roadmap every morning um, that, that can be provided to the actors, which is the script, uh, you don't have a ghost of a chance. And so what Billy and Dan did respectively with their shows is they put that mix of heart and uh, comedy on the page, which is so rare and it's so impossible. And when it comes across your desk, you just want to jump on it. And that's what happened with me with Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Not that my character has even a shred of heart, but <laughs> the show does. Uh, I play yeah. a guy named Frank Sullivan, who's the head of the policeman's union in, in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And in this, in this time of, of BLM and, and, and George Floyd's uh, horrible, horrible, uh, that, that travesty. Um, I think Dan had to straddle a tricky line, so much so that I think that prior to my coming on for the eighth season, I think they shot a bunch of shows and then threw them out uh, because I don't know why, I could only speculate, but something must have been a little slippery and I wouldn't pretend to know what it was. So when this was sent to me in the middle of February, when we were shoulder deep in the pandemic, uh, I was thrilled. Uh, I was absolutely thrilled. But Dan was so, so concerned with straddling and being sensitive to the different challenges and awarenesses that, that are present today. I think he reshot about four episodes. And that's the only reason I was brought on. Uh, I think they were going on a certain track that certainly didn't include me. And when they retooled, uh, I was I was provided with an opportunity to participate. Yeah, I, I feel like if 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 Dr. Cox was harsh but with a heart of gold, uh, Frank is harsh with a heart of eccentrically weird. Uh, no, he's he's harsh with a heart of blue. All he <laughs> sees is blue. And the way Dan wrote him, he doesn't see men or women, black or white. He doesn't see any religion. He sees blue, uh, as in the police union in New York, mm -hmm. and specifically the rank and file, which are cops, not detectives. Yeah. And so when someone like Andre's character or Andy's character or any of them in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, they're all detectives, um, they're fair game. And 
so that's where that conflict uh, starts to pay dividends. Because I'm looking out for blue and they're in pursuit of other things. And I could care less what they're in pursuit of. All I care about is delivering for blue. And now, of course, you've famously played uh, Corrupt Cop over on Chicago PD. Yeah. Uh, and and not, very not needed to be funny, Kelton, very different. Yeah. Kelton was very different. Kelton was an exercise in ambition. And I, I, don't, I don't know if that's Frank Sullivan's thing, because when I talked to my friend Kevin McCabe, um, who was the deputy mayor under David Dinkins and is an unbelievable resource for all things uh, New York cops and politics. When I spoke with Kevin, when you've become in New York, it's the Police Bene Benevolence Association uh, in this fictitious uh, version of Brooklyn Night of the New York City Union, it's called the, the head of the Policeman's Union. Um, when you've become the head of the the PBA, the P P Policeman's Benevolent Association, or the Policeman's Union, you've reached the, the peak. You're as, that's as good as it gets. No one has gone on to become mayor. No one, you, this is it. You've reached it. You, whatever, you, whatever your ambition was, you, you achieved it. Now with Kelton uh, on, on Chicago PD, I think this was a guy who, obviously on the page, he had a set, set of sights on being mayor and then had a set of sights on probably being governor, maybe senator. Uh, th this was, a, this was an, an exercise in ambition. Yeah, that goalpost and was gonna move, yeah. So many times actors are trained to look for what's, what is, what's the redemption in the character? What's, what's, what grounds the character in some good? And with Kelton, uh, it was about ambition. It wasn't reconciling those which gave us license to just go uh just a, a an ambition driven political beast and we we grounded him in that with no apologies now now Sull o'sullivan is a totally different character totally different and grounded in comedy mm -hmm. so in going from from reading him on the page in february to to working out the 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 real physical man in front of the cam character in front of the camera uh can you talk a little bit about the the growth the back and forth of that well i worked with dan gore a lot um and and he allowed me to provide a lot of the input i just shared with you mm -hmm. in shaping this character and the first thing i sent him oh, i wish i had my notebook the first thing i sent him was a picture on on one page of of my notebooks of uh of archie bunker uh and, and Yosemite Sam. And I, use, <laughs> I use these notebooks for my homework for every film I've ever done. Down in the rehearsal space, there's, I don't know, there's about 80 of these for movies and about 400 for episodes of TV. And um, they function as both um, work tablets and as, as diaries. And in that one, the first thing I sent him was Archie Bunker meets Yosemite Sam. And he fell off his chair on the Zoom call. And we went from there and it was just uh, a very classically um, drawn comic foil for uh, Andy's character and Andre's character. Because remember, they, they weren't trying to reinvent the wheel mm -hmm. in, a, in a newly found, picked up season eight. Uh, the show was canceled and like Scrubs. And so now Billy did the opposite with Scrubs. He did reinvent the wheel and mm -hmm. it didn't quite yield the dividends he was looking for, but it was a brave attempt. And with uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, what Dan did, I thought brilliantly, was he played to the ensemble's strength. So he did not try to um, exercise any ghosts or demons that had been in the background out of frame for seven seasons. He went solidly into each character's strength and wrote to their strength. And to bring me in to get in the way of those strengths, at least for Andre and Andy's character, was just so solid. And it was like a metronome. It was right on rhythm. And, and that's, that's what I got ready to do. I, I, a lot of times I'm very much a rhythm player. Billy Lawrence and Oliver Stone have written the best for my, for my, 
mouth. And Dan uh, wrote beautifully for the way I approach uh, the script. And so when somebody called action, I, I, was, I was fully loaded and ready to go. Plus, I, I haven't had that much time to get ready for something in forever. I mean, I, I had about a month to get ready for this thing. And then because my episodes were spread out, uh, I got all these genius rewrites. And uh, if you give me time, I can pretty much do the phone book. Uh, I then get rid of it. But I had time on this to just create an enormous amount of chaos. <laughs> yeah, I... You, you so often embody characters so completely that they just become iconic for me. And I can never tell when something was written for you or when, uh, you know, there's some storied four other guys that, that could have been it. it. Was was this an audition process or, or did Dan have your voice in mind for that pattern to start with? They No, no, there was no auditioning. <laughs> that ship, thankfully, has sailed. This was just sent to me and it was a straight offer. and. Uh, I was, when I read it, I, I love, I loved Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but I didn't want to play, uh, uh, a not fun role. Mm -hmm. And O'Sullivan is the exact opposite. He's a, he's a banquet. <laughs> <laughs> he's a banquet of eccentricities. I feel like with O'Sullivan that there's a chance, and I'm totally making this up. There's a chance that the writers had a closet on a, at, in the writer's room at a Brooklyn Nine-Nine with all the different eccentricities that, that they'd never been able to imbue with, with different characters in the ensemble and guest stars over the years. And they took it out and they shook it into a glass and they, they shook it up and it was, it was Frank O'Sullivan. <laughs> and I mean, how do you get a Billy Joel fanatic? When you see what a fanatic he is, you're not gonna believe it, it's genius who lives in his mother's basement, who, who hosts an NHL podcast about the Islanders called Islanders Talk uh, and, and only serves one thing. He serves the men and women of his union and, uh, and he's good at it, which is really fun. Um, the worst thing that happens is he gets in his own way, which is always genius. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but there are times when almost like, you know, when you're paying, playing ping pong or tennis and it's all just volleys right at the net. Mm -hmm. There are scenes with Andre and myself and Andy, or just with Andre and I, where it's just volleys at the net. And <laughs> it's, it's, it's that syncopation that someone as skilled as Andre can execute uh, without an um, or a, an I mean, or a you know, or uh, the things that drive me insane. Uh, just the, the clean text. And that's thrilling. On most sets, it's hard to find a thrill. And when you can just volley at net, just that syncopation of, of really choppy volleys uh, and everyone's talking as fast as, as Marty Scorsese and it's just flying. And you already know, you're gonna see how the editors are gonna cut it. And to be able to do that with Andre and, and Andy to some extent, uh, that was thrilling. I loved the just on point comeback on the steps when when frank says no my mom lives with me in her house and and just moves right it it that that kind of quickness back and forth is is brilliant uh and and the projects that you've picked I, you can see that love of language i mean getting to do mammoth on stage uh greatest experience of my life at when when you look at uh at things you're enjoying right now I, I always feel like you have a great ear for projects and talent i remember seeing the the jack bull uh, or, or you do, uh, so I remember watching that on HBO at the time and just falling in love with it. Uh, when you're looking around at things now, you'd said you liked Brooklyn, or is there anything else that that just really catches anybody else writing right now that's just blowing you away? I think what Billy's doing on Ted Lasso is fantastic. Uh, I'm a TV junkie, and of course now I'm gonna I'm gonna grip up and not be able to remember remember anything. Oh, that guy Faudwa, that guy, the Israeli actor. Um, who's on the show F-A-D-U, Faudua, about cops and robbers in Israel and Palestine. Uh, that, that, that Israeli ensemble, uh, I can't recommend it highly enough to you. Oh, very cool. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but it's F-A-D-U. And now he has a new show, this bald kind of 
bulldog uh, of, a, of an actor who's just fantastic. Um, he has a new show on as well right now on Netflix and I watched it. It was good. It was a C plus B minus. Fado was an A. Fado was, Fado was like uh, the Sopranos, a little Sopranos, a little of uh, the show down in Baltimore, The Wire. The Wire. Uh, it's the, there's some there's some The Wire in it, and that's a heck of a pedigree. Yeah. Not, not that any producers had anything to do with it. Just there's some there's some vibes. Just putting itself in that league, I'll definitely check it out. Which is a heck of a thing to say, because I The Wire for me is way way up there. Well, in terms of sitcoms. Uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine uh, just feels like the rock stars of of comedy right now to me, and getting them to getting to watch them take a victory lap eighth season. It is a victory uh, lap, isn't it? How great! And and to to wonder for a year how they were going to handle things, and now get to see to see you be so involved in it is just absolutely wonderful. I I, I can't wait to see the season unfold. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty great. It's it's pretty great. I thought that second episode, which I had not seen. Um, I haven't seen a frame of the thing. So I only saw what I saw last week because I didn't do any looping and I'm not a producer on this. So I haven't, I've seen nothing. And it was thrilling to watch it last Thursday. It was thrilling. And then to see those guys go out to that cabin, the second episode was mm-hmm. great. great. That ensemble so watertight. Yeah. They're just, they're great. You can tell. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, it, uh, similar to my feeling on Ted Lasso right now, it, Every time I get to watch a little bit more Brooklyn Nine Nine, you're just glad to see these players be in a room together. And uh, I agree. I you're an absolutely brilliant choice to add uh, as a foil for this. Oh, season. thank you. Uh, thank you so much for making time to talk about it with me today. I, I really appreciate great it. Great to see you. Great to uh, great to hit it back and forth with you. Yeah. Have a great rest of your night. All the best.